Hi, I'm Cory, and I'm going to continue to paint Narusuma. Check out the other video if you haven't already seen it. But first I'm going to have to sand down this 3D print. There's a lot of sanding. How there, is there, there is so, so much sanding. sanding? In the end we add a little bit of dirt texture, you know, to look nice, but also to cover up our mistakes. Let's keep it real and hit the airbrush booth. So we're stylizing the throne loosely to look like it's embodied by snakes that are a native species to India. For that we're going to use yellow mid-tones, a dark chocolate back, and then we'll blow out the face with some more eccentric colors. We're just getting all the base tones down right now. Um, I'll be coming back and fixing things up with a brush, adding washes, glazes, but we want to do most of the work uh, using the airbrush just because there's so much surface area on the model. To paint it all by hand, uh, it would just take ages. I don't know if the outside of the chair is supposed to be fire or tropical wood, but I'm going to go with the latter. So I'm adding a ruddy brown base to start off both it and the red leather cushions with. I add a zenithal highlight for the inks I'll eventually be using on the wood area. Looks like someone has a clog. I'm gonna start kind of roughly sketching in our spectacled cobra here. I put an example on the left so you can see what we're going for. I'll be doing the white sections later with a brush because honestly it's just easier, but I want the black transitions to be painless, easy, and look good. So why not use the airbrush and touch up some other things while we're at it. And with that, our pre-shading is pretty much done. The Scale 75 Chestnut Ink is pretty fantastic. It basically takes one pass, and if you've Zenithal highlighted things, it looks like a pretty believable hardwood. A bit of thinned down contrast paint for the red leather, and we're done. I hit the center body of the snake with Agrax Earthshade right from the pot. Um, I just take water on my brush and I kind of thin that out on the snake so it flows into the uh, lighter recesses where it's not as dark, creating kind of a hacky transition, but it works. I do the same thing with the Agrax Earthshade to the main body of the snake and uh, realize it looks uh, awful. So I try that again after quickly cleaning everything off with some soft tone. Um, I believe it's by model color, I'm not sure. Uh, just a little bit thinned down even more uh, with Lamian Medium by Citadel. Tilting the model backwards allows the shade or wash to flow into the recesses exactly where I want it to be. Uh, kind of use gravity to your favor. I switch over to a generic purple wash and I slowly start adding that to the face of the snakes and building it up a little bit more each time. Um, every time I let it dry and I cover more and more area so it looks like the head is more gradually moving into a purple tone from the orange. Whenever you apply any washes, you end up getting a lot of tea staining. So I take the opportunity to dry brush with a bone color um, over all the main 
um, stomach of the snakes and then I slowly add more and more pure white to my color and uh, dry brush with a lighter touch each time. It is bewilderingly hard to paint the insides of these mouths and the undersides of these snake heads on this giant model curving over while filming. So nothing fancy here with the fabric, um, contrast paints have a use and it's definitely this. Um, I believe I used the ultramarine blue to do the main base, but before I let everything completely dry, I take my lighter tone that I'm building up to, put that on my palette and start kind of wet blending things into place. With each pass, I get more and more refined with the highlights that I add, adding a little bit more of my new brighter blue every time. I do not know why I constantly feel the need to poke my models and wipe off paint with my fingers. Sometimes I just touch them for no reason. It's like a compulsion and it needs to stop. <laughs> I don't know why I do it. I'm really trying not to. Now that the robe's done, I'm gonna take so <laughs> I'm I'm doing it again. I'm, anyway, I take the some bronze skin tone and I just kind of dry brush I dry brush that onto the face and uh, slowly work up to kind of a coppery tone near the almost that time, but I didn't. But I work up to a coppery tone near the snout before working on finishing some of the smaller details like the uh, teeth. All right, now that we're done the minor detailing, we're going to paint some pure white into the eyeballs because uh, we're going to have fun with these eyes. I'm going to take some very bright, I think it's moot green, and I'm going to spray it uh, so it looks like they're glowing. It's probably the easiest thing you can do with an airbrush. Um, you can even stop right there, honestly, but from that point, just to spruce it up, I go back and I touch up the eyes again with pure white um, before taking a, I think it's called Hex Wraith green, and I paint that right into the eye sockets just to add a little bit more depth so it doesn't look only airbrushed on uh, before going back and finally touching up uh, the eyes for <laughs> uh, I did it again um, for the final time with uh, pure white with just a little bit of that hex wraith added to it There's a low point to every model and owning your mistakes is how you get better. So in this case, it's probably that ivory. I set down the base coat with pure white and we'll get back to that in a second, but I'm gonna take a quick detour and just paint some flowers. It's nothing special, just green for the vines, pink, adding a little bit of white each time and building up to um, pretty little flowers. So this apothecary, well, yeah, get it right into the ferrule of my brush. Ruin that brush all the way up. Great. Okay, but no, this apothecary white from Citadel, I want to make it work, and it's so close to working. I actually don't think it's terrible here, but there's something about it that just doesn't seem to jive with the rest of the model. 
Uh, once it dries, uh, I just go back and I start touching up the model with my off-white, I think I'm using pale sands, and then building up to highlights with just a uh, pure white. I don't know. I'm going to have to kind of play with this a little bit more, I think, to get the most out of it. I absolutely did not need to do this right now. I should have waited till the end of the model, but I was sick of my grubby little fingers rubbing off the white ink from the base. So I grabbed a brush and I started slowly, methodically, meticulously painting. Um, and it just took forever because it's so big. And then I thought, I have an airbrush. Why don't I use the airbrush? All right, so we're on to probably my favorite part of this whole project. I don't know why I found it really satisfying. I took those outlines that I'd airbrushed in previously and I took a off-white, it looks pure white here, but it's uh, got a, a little bit of a brown tone to it. And I just start painting in where those white lines are gonna be. Uh, it doesn't actually have to be exact. If you mess anything up, like I do right here, you just go back in with a little bit of black and you fix it. Um, we're eventually going to be taking some soft tone and going in and adding a little bit of depth. It doesn't have to be uh, exactly perfect. And then once that dries, I'm going to come back with some pure white and I'm just going to highlight right down the middle of that white line. It was fun to paint. Came out pretty nice. Agrax Earthshade was not meant to go on an area this big, but it's fine. You can clean up any tea staining with an airbrush, right? So that's what I do here. throw on some varnish for stability. Um, I have a whole bunch of glossy paint on varnish so I just slop that on and then once it's dry I hit it with the matte clear coat that I showed earlier. Now I should be able to touch it without ruining everything. The gems are kind of a work in progress. I'm still trying to learn how to do them properly but I hit all the gem spots with a blue contrast paint Add a little bit of white, slowly work up to the reflections, but if I'm being honest, not slowly enough. It's a little chalkier than I would have uh, hoped. Um, anyway, but I, what was I even saying? I try to fix that a little bit by kind of using a blue glaze to go over the middle of the gems and I use a blue glaze to go over the middle of the gems and make that transition a little bit smoother. Um, I'm pretty happy with them by the end, but I wish I was a little bit tighter with the glaze because there's a lot of uh, spillage here that you can see that I ended up having to clean up. Um, yeah, it's a learning process. <laughs> I think that's the last one. I'm pretty sure that's the last one. Finally, I can work on some of the gold filigree at the back here. It always looks rough when you're starting, but I start with my uh, ochre base color and I just kind of paint within the lines and get it all filled in. I'm realizing I wish I would have done a better job gluing the back together there because it looks a little bit rough, but oh well, what can you do at this point? 
Um, I go over the whole thing with some Rykeln Flesh shades, so it kind of blends into the red a little bit better. And then I do the uh, same process I do for any sort of gold, non-metallic metal. And I add a little bit of uh, lemon white um, to my ochre mix um, to slowly start to build things up. And then once that's in place on the parts where I think light would be hitting the most, um, I add uh, about 50% white to my mixture and I touch up those um, kind of reflective points. And that's pretty much it. With that, um, I think our model's done. On to the glamour shots. <laughs> 